Okay, so what have we got here today? What was so, our setup? We have a piece of boulder opal. Oh, so wow. this one has already split and has shown the colour bar. Mm -hmm. And the, the red is called ironstone. Um, and it's what we also refer to as potch. So I'm going to see how much of this colour bar I can retain and actually just take that down, see what we've got at this end, give this a nice shape, mm -hmm. and see we're going. So I've because we've got a boulder opal, yeah. it's, it's, it's a fairly soft gem, so I'm starting with a 600 grit lap. Okay. Um, you might go, depending on the gem you have, so if, for example, I were to be cutting this piece of moss agate, I would start with an 80 to get the shape I want, because moss agate is much harder than boulder opal. Yeah. And then you go through the different grades of lapidary uh, wheel to get down to, oh well, I, I finish on a 3000 grit and then I take it onto the polishing wheels. Some people will only do it on the actual laps. Oh, okay. but the way that I was taught is we get that far and then we move on to the wheels with paste. So that's the way I do it. So on my little contraption, I have a little piece here so that I can get in lower. Mm -hmm. And then I can put that little back bit back in. That'll stop the water flying everywhere, basically. <laughs> so it's water fed this turns and you can change so once it's on you can change the speed depending on how quickly or fast you might want to do it i usually go about there you get the water dripping and you don't need a huge amount of water so i just get that dripping to start with and turn it back that's even a bit fast so it's about even less than one a second as you yeah. don't need much water at all so i'm going to take this off to start with because i'm going to go around the edges and you can see that ironstone coming off already. And I might go backwards and forwards, or I might go all the way around, depending on, on what I want to do. So, I'm going to turn that speed up a little bit. Because I don't want to change the shape of this gem much at all. I just want to just get those sides and those corners smooth round. So again, you can go in and out on the lap. And I'm keeping this fairly flat. What sort of pressure are you applying? Very little, very little. You don't want to stop the lap moving. There's just enough really to hold it against it so it doesn't kind of fly away. Yeah. That's all, all the pressure I'm putting. And we're starting to get round corners now and there. Let me see, you can find if I hold it, you can really see how much of that ironstone is coming away. And this is with a 600. So if I was on a, a 230 or a 150, I mean, I wouldn't use an AC at all. It would just disappear too quickly. It's going to take a lot more faster, but I'm just deciding to work slowly. So I've got some corners I'm happy with. It's just slightly rhomboidal, which is quite nice. Now, the top is definitely domed and I want to make sure that I don't take too much of this away. You can see here mm. that the colour bar is, is fairly thick but as I go round to this end the colour bar disappears quite a lot. So I'm going to rock this over the top now just to start taking the high points down. Have a look starting to come down already. I'm going to concentrate on the lower end just to see if there's any colour bar in there. Does the colour bar um, wear quicker than like the host rock? About the same as one another, yep. to be honest. It looks like there's a colour bar actually in there as well. So I might be interesting to have a gem that's got the colour on more than one side. So I'm just going to take this potch down a bit. Now if you work on the outside of the lap, you're going to get you're going to remove more than on the inside because obviously the, the outside moves a lot faster than the inside. We can start with going through it's that quick, yellow. Isn't it? Yeah. Now, so I'm getting it down, and by keeping it moving around the whole width of the lap, you're wearing the lap down at the, at the same rate everywhere. And I'm just avoiding the very edge because I don't want to slip off the edge and kind of gouge into it. Yeah. Now the other way you can cab oh, wow. stones wow. Yes. Yeah, is with a lap that is not flat but a wheel so yeah. it has a band mm -hmm. all the way around. 
which a lot of people who do CAD gems have. But I have this one because it allows me to... No, it doesn't look like there's a colour bar in there, but we'll carry on a bit and, and see. Um, this allows me to both facet and cab. But it's it's kind of interesting, the colours in, in there. There's such, I mean, I know I'm colour blind, maybe even, but I think there's a tiny bit of blue, yeah, a little blue, blue stripe, yeah. which looks like that's a colour bar in there. So I'd like to get down to it. It doesn't look like it's a very thin, thick bar. Yeah, because there's a vein a bit further up, isn't yeah. it? It seems sort of yeah. colour, so yeah. So let's see if we can get in there. It is exciting, isn't it? Mm. It is, because mm. you don't know what you're going to reveal. I mean, we know what we've got at this end, because we've got that on top. Yeah. But here, you know, there's a possibility of something different. And then the fun is trying to create a setting <laughs> for a gem of this shape. <laughs> I know a man. Uh, <laughs> no. I'll, I'll bring it in the post here. <laughs> okay, I don't know if we're going to... I think the colour bar is just too thin, but we'll find out. Yeah, I can just about see that coming yeah. through, can't you? Come on. Is it me or is it getting thicker? <laughs> the bar? Yeah. Yeah, it's getting slightly wider. Yeah. 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 It is. Or mm. is it just because you're the angle that you're... Yeah, no. Isn't that good? That's amazing, isn't it? So how, long yeah, would you, how long would you take? Just to, to cut a, a particular, so it depends on, on 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 how far you want to go through the stone to, to get the colour. Or something. Yeah, I mean, on average, a, a gem of this size would probably take about no more than half an hour because it's soft. Um, to kind of for you to find what it's got in it and and get it finished. Just not sure that 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 is a much of a bar at all, but it's interesting. Mm. What am I going to do with it? I'm just going to take so, it down so, on that so side. So, would you sort of go, oh, I'll leave that, I'll put that to one side and I'll come back to it again? Or do you think that's not going to work? I usually take it to destruction. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, yeah. <laughs> It'll be, okay, that's fine. So, don't really think there's much of a colour bar in there. You know, it looked more interesting than it is seeming now. But we've got all this colour at this end. So, let's see what this is going to give us. It might just be fairly flat colour or it might really turn out to be opalescent. So there is there's a gorgeous colour right in the corner. Yeah. Like a violet, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I just wanna so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off this end. Because I don't think there's anything there worth worth having. Bracelet, in fact, if you were to touch your finger on it. Oh wow. Not at all. You can do your nails on it nicely. <laughs> 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 and is that the same with the other grits as well? I mean obviously you're not gonna No. But yeah. Yeah, they're all fancy. But I mean the, the eighty grit is the one that you can really catch things on. Um, yeah. so you'd you'd hold up to it very gently until it starts to bite. Because I think that's what puts me off is the I don't know, the, the fear of, of getting injured, I suppose. Mm. Mm. That's probably I mean, very, very... You've obviously got the edge of steel there. It's not yeah. sharp, mm. but, you know, the worst thing is if, if the gem comes off and you go to grab it before turning the wheel off, yeah. you know, it, it'll stop, yeah. you know, but uh, it'll only really go ow at the same time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I think this, was, this was only about 280 or something. Mm. came from China. And the, Right, which is why it's not the best quality, but for what I wanted to do, especially as a beginner, 
Yeah. Well, it doesn't. I'm not going to become just a lapidaris. No, this is just a, no, a kind of side hustle. Yeah. So it doesn't make any sense to spend loads of money. Okay, so let's just take that down on that side now. So I'd have to redop it now if I wanted to remove more of that potch, which I'm not going to bother to do. But what I will do now is we'll go on to the 3000 grit, and then we can put it on the polishing wheels. So this part over here then is to do if you want to do your faceting? Yes, so that's your faceting mast, so you'd... Oh, wow. That goes on there, yep. and then your gem goes in to a dot on there, yep. and then you, you set the angle, and you set the angle that way. And, uh, yeah. So do you, ever use, do you ever use that? Do you ever sort of facets or is it mainly yeah, just... Yeah, well, I do facets yeah. as well. Um, it really depends, you know, what the gem is and what I fancy doing with it. So this this piece here, which I have... So that was that was faceted, that piece of ametrine. Oh, wow. And I've started cutting, so carving into it there. But I wasn't happy with the tool that I had acquired. Um, so I've got to find something better to do it. But that was faceted on here. Lovely. And, mm. uh, yeah. Okay, so we've got the 3K grit on now. So this takes virtually nothing off, which is what we want. It's just going to give a little more polish to the opal. So, Oh, wow, yeah. So that's got it nice. Really brought out the colour as well, isn't it? Yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think that's as far as I want to go on that. You don't need to go far when you get to this point. And now we can put it on the polishing wheels. Wow. So, small mops. So a stitched cotton mop, which has a 2.5 micron paste used oh, okay. on it yeah, yeah. so that's what i'll put on first and i won't because it's a boulder opal i won't use that much but Can then i go to, on to a swans down mop mm, okay and that has a 0.5 micron paste on it so that's what i use and this is what i use for the synthetic opal as well i'll finish it on this as if it's a gemstone right so i'm just going to clever a little paste on so I would never have thought of using normal mops. Oh, OK. I you don't know how things work. Obviously, when it comes to PG, I have, I'm well, completely a newbie on this. But, but yeah, I would never have thought of using normal mops. Yeah. I thought perhaps you would use... I don't know, to be honest. I've no. never even thought of it. Well, like I said, most people tend to... And I always use different fingers, so I don't mix yes. 2.5 <laughs> on that one. Um, most people tend to finish it on a, on a lap with paste, especially for fac faceted gems, because you don't want to take the corners off yeah, on the facets. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but for cabs, this is this, this is absolutely fine. So going going noisy. Again, just offering it up, just as you would a piece of jewellery, in that same space on the mop. Yeah. Then it's going to go around the sides a bit as well. Probably doesn't need much more, otherwise we take too much off. Maybe a little bit. Again, with a 2.5 micron paste, it's not going to take much off at all. So this, this bit is the equivalent of your pre-polish or your triple E? Yes. Yeah. So that's now got... Wow, goodness me. A nice sheen to it. Yeah. A bit of sparkle. That's beautiful. So that's now... So that's after the 2.5. That's pretty good, isn't it? And that's looking pretty that. good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, then we go on to the point five. So you've even kept your cloth separate, yes. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no cross contamination of the paste. No, yeah. exactly. Okay. Yeah. And there you wow, go. goodness me. <gasps> so this is obviously a quick one. Yeah. 
but it just shows you what joy you can find inside of Older Open. Oh my goodness. When can we get one? Just trying to see if I just focus on it. Yeah. Very good, isn't it? Yeah. I love it. So, if you want to try the piddery, I think Boulder Opals are really nice ones to start with mm. because you can do it quite quickly and you can get some amazing yeah. results. That is just bad. tiny little gems. Goodness me. Oh, so well, how, do you you. Put, how do you put the, the, the gems onto the sticks? So that is a mixture of super glue and talcum powder. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> Traditionally you dock with wax. Yes. Um, but this is a lot stronger than wax. Because if you get if the gem heats up too much, the wax yeah, gets off. Of course, you can come off. That doesn't happen with this. So what I'll do is we'll take this off now. I'll just finish the back, take it down a bit because it's quite high, and then I expect to see you wearing it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> That's so kind. But Thank you. No problem at all. <laughs> so I'm going now because we're taking the iron stone off the back. I'm going for a 230 grit wheel because we just need to take that off. So using, I use some old snips. I snip through the glue and the tarpon powder. Mm -hmm. And then to hold it, I use a wonderful tool. Because <laughs> 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 you can stick that onto the top of the gem and then just hold it. it There's so something to, you've got to hold. And then I'm going to obviously take all the glue off. I'm going to take this down probably by about half as well because it's, it's very tall on that piece. So, get that going. I'll put this back in place now, so the water doesn't spray everywhere. And just, just let you hold on to it. Yep. And what I tend to do is I do it one way and then turn it around and do it the other, so that even though you're trying to have even pressure, you tend to lean one way or the other. Mm. So by doing this. Stop it. You can see all that iron stone yes. mm -hmm. coming off very quickly. The glue was gone already. I'll just take it down by about a millimetre or something. Is it nice? Mm, this yeah. I love this. <laughs> mm. When I've got really noisy stones on a, on a very high grit, I sit here with headphones on playing music. <laughs> so I can't. <laughs> Otherwise, and you just, no, I don't want that noise. <laughs> it's so good, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. It really is. I find if I don't, if I want to create something and I don't know what it is, rather than getting frustrated, I come and cab. Mm. Because it's just the same back and back and you get into a, in, into the zone mm. of being creative without being, without forcing it. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Mm. Because I'm, the gem is telling me what to do. Yes. Right, so that's... Mm. And the shape you end up is dependent upon the features of the stone and the, 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 the colour that's, that's been revealed. Yes. You stop at one direction because you've got the right colour, the, then you start on another, I suppose. Yes. Wow, that has gone oh, down, yeah. hasn't it? So there you have. Look at that. That's amazing. A little boulder rifle. Oh, fabulous. Thank you so much. That's a pleasure.